Tom Avery here, the head pro at the Consistent Tennis Wins Academy in Naples, Florida. Uh, one of my subscribers sent me an email. His name is Jack. And Jack said, Tom, how do I get more power with my serve, my forehand, and my backhand? Jack, you want the whole package. All right, that's good. But here's the thing with power. The number one thing I think that people should think about is keeping loose, okay? Because racket head speed, racket head acceleration as you're coming into the contact zone is going to be key for power. And many players are holding the racket too tight. When you hold the racket too tight, now you've got tension not only in your hand and wrist, but in your forearm, your upper arm, all the way to your shoulder, you're going to be tight. And when you're tight, your, your muscles are not going to be moving fast. So the key is you really need to loosen up. Now, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being as tight as you can hold the racket, you don't want to ever be near 10. Now, when you watch players in, their, in that ready position waiting for the serve, you'll see they're twirling the racket and they've got a very loose grip. So on a scale of one to 10, they may be holding the racket at a two, very lightly, as if you were holding a small bird, okay? If you were holding a small bird, you don't want the bird to fly away, so, but you don't want to crush the bird at the same time. So you're holding it lightly. Now, that's going to give you loose muscles so that when, when you go to swing, you know you're going to get that racket head speed, okay? So staying loose in the hitting arm and the hitting shoulder especially are going to help. The other thing you want to think about is that the power is coming from the ground up. So if you're trying to drive your ground strokes and hit them with topspin, you're using your legs. Remember, if you're hitting with topspin, you're always swinging on a low to high plane, okay? So it's always a low to high swing when you're driving with topspin. So you have to bend. So the power is coming from the ground up. So when you bend, you're putting a force down into the court and then when you lift, your legs are lifting as you hit the ball, that's going to give you the power from the ground up. Another point is the kinetic chain. So when you coil, so if somebody hits me a forehand, immediately I start to turn the upper body. It's this coiling effect and then the uncoiling as you hit. And as you uncoil, the racket continues to pick up speed and to accelerate into that contact zone. So remember though, when you're out practicing, I guess I'm famous for this by now. <laughs> Think of one or two points, maximum two points. So I just gave you three, but uh, you don't want to think about three. One, pick one, work on that for a while. Or you can concentrate on two if possible. So, uh, and it is possible, by the way, you can think of two things when you're hitting a ball. And always think of them in the sequence that they're happening. So, you know, when I go out to practice this though, typically I'll just focus on one area. So I might be saying, you know, stay loose. I'm just trying to keep a loose grip on the racket. So when you go out, you really have to be aware. You know, every now and then ask yourself, how tight am I holding the racket? Or do I have a nice, loose, relaxed grip on the racket? So that's going to be important for you to ask yourself that question because you want to be holding that racket like a number two and just you know, you want to get that racket head speed, you know, get that swishing sound. You want to get that sound, and that's going to bring some nice racket head acceleration to that contact zone. 
So let me show you a practice session now. I'll hit some balls. My assistant Stephanie will hit some with her two-handed backhand and uh, you'll get a look at that and different points that you can focus on. By the way, if you want my free forehand course, rock solid forehand course, please click this button up in your left hand corner. Okay, that's awesome course. It's gonna help your, uh, your forehand tremendously. Okay, number one thing Stephanie's working on here is staying loose with her grip. Okay, she's just trying to stay loose and relaxed. Everything's loose from the hand all the way up to her shoulders. She's staying loose and relaxed. Okay, Stephanie, are you focusing on that? Yeah. Okay, she said yes. She's focusing on staying real loose with her hands. And that's going to translate to loose arm, loose shoulders. Okay, now, Stephanie, I want you to focus on using your legs a little more. Okay, so remember, the power comes from the ground up. So she's going to bend a little more and lift into the shot. Let's see you lift. That's it. Beautiful. Good. Nice. She's got a great follow through there. You can see how her rear leg comes around. Nice hitting. Okay, watch here. Steffi gets a nice shoulder turn as she gets the racket back. Okay, right there you can see she's looking over her left shoulder. So very good coiling there. Now at this point, she's using her legs. See how her knees are bent. So she's going to get some power now from the ground as she comes up and towards her target on the finish. Okay, fantastic. Very good. All right, now I want you to focus on coiling a little more with the upper body and then just really uncoiling into the shot. Good. Nice. Good. That's it. Very good. All right, Stephanie, great job. All right, so I'm focusing on here, just staying really loose and re relaxed with the hand. That's gonna to translate to a loose arm, loose shoulder. So you're ho I'm holding that racket at a two, you know, like I'd be holding that small bird. Uh, Okay, remember the power comes from the ground up, so I'm gonna use my legs a little more now. Here we go. Okay, watch here in slow motion. You can really see how I'm using the legs for power and lift. I'm going to start to go down here, bending the knees while they are right there. I call that the sitting position. It's like I'm going to sit down in a chair. But now watch as I get up out of the chair, I'll actually come off the ground as I hit the ball. Okay, and then the last thing that you might want to consider is that coiling. You know, turn the upper body and then uncoil into the shot. Okay, here in slow motion, you can see how the upper body starts to coil here. 
Notice the left hand stays on the racket. Right there, you can see I'm, I'm looking over my left shoulder. Now, as I start to unwind, the left hand will come back out in front. And now the torso is turning into the shot. Okay, when you're practicing your serve, again, the same three things you want to keep in mind. Number one, hold the racket very loosely, like you're holding that small bird. You don't want a tight grip, and keep your hitting shoulder nice and loose and relaxed. That's going to help your racket head speed. So I'm going to focus on that. What else, Stephanie, would we focus on? When I serve, I focus a lot on my legs because most of the power comes from the legs when you serve. So yeah. you want to try to go down to bend your knees, yeah. to load, and then you want to jump and explode. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Now this, you know, I'm old school. So when I learned to play tennis, we weren't using our legs as much on the serve. But even Roscoe Tanner back in the day was hitting 140 and he barely <laughs> bent his knees. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you can do it both ways, but I'm sure, you know, without a doubt, the legs are going to help you on your serve. There's no question about that. The other thing you want to consider is um, rotation. If you remember McEnroe, how he used to serve, and he'd, he'd have his back, his back would be to his opponent. And then he, you know, he gets so much rotation and then he just whip around, you know, and get tremendous racket head speed from uncoiling that rotation. So those are the things that Stephanie and I would be thinking about as we're practicing our serves. So we're going to come on out here and hit, hit a few serves and we're going to work on that. Go ahead, Stephanie, whenever you're ready. Nice. She's using her, using her legs, great. Ah. Beautiful, good sound. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, and how tight are you holding your racket? Loose, right? Loose. <laughs> Going for that too, right? Just like the bird, right? All right, coach, tell me, how am I doing with my, with bending my legs, all right? Tell me how I'm doing here. A little bit better. A little better? A little, better. A little better. <laughs> These old knees don't want to bend. You can still bend a little bit more. Yeah, okay. And you get more power. All right. Okay, good. Here we go, I'm going to get down now. Ah! Yeah. Try to use the energy to go up. Yeah. You Ground's coming. I mean the up uh, and not only forward. Up and forward. Up and forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. Come high. Yeah, yeah. Come far. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. High and a little bit forward. Okay. <laughs> Let me try it one more time. I'm trying to go up here. Yeah, it was better. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look where I sound. I'm yeah. going to go up. She's going up. Yeah, that's good. So remember those three points you want to consider. But when you go out to practice, I think you're probably better off just doing one at a time. You know, you're thinking about keeping a loose hand, loose grip, okay? Or you're using the legs more, or you're trying to get more coiling. So, yeah, you can't yeah. think about all these things at the same time. You no. have to go step by step. And when you work a lot on one thing, it becomes um, natural for you. So you don't have to think about it anymore. And when you work on all these things, in the end, everything will work together. But yes. it will take some time and you have to practice a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. See, what Stephanie's saying is there, when you focus on one point, 
and you're really dialed in and trying to, let's say, just hold a loose hand, your brain starts to remember that signal. You know, that signal is burned in your brain, actually, so that you're, you're going to stay loose all the time. But that, like Stephanie says, it takes practice. I mean, you got to really work to get this. You have to be persistent, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, take care. And um, remember, my free rock-solid forehand course is up here in your left-hand corner. Please subscribe, post any comments below. Love to hear from you. All the best. See Take you care. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>